is the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Oh, oh, yeah, it is. But it's not just any Ross Tucker Football Podcast. It is a Wisdom Wednesday with Professor Andrew Brandt black back, which means class is in session. We are presented, of course, by DraftKings, America's number one rated sports book app. It's Wednesday, which means we're already two days away from a spread the word winner, a sponsor confirmation email winner, a YouTube shout out winner, youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL, at Ross Tucker NFL, at Ross Tucker Pod. So many good sponsors on the sponsor tab over at RossTucker.com and make sure you are signed up to get my stories newsletter that I've been sending out next week. It's been a long time since I sent one out, but in there you will know how to win one of the last three Maddens because I know a lot of you would still like one of those, which is awesome. There's a lot to get to with yesterday being the trade deadline and even additional news on top of the trade deadline. It's Big Show time. The Big Show. All right, so he joins us about every other week now, unless it's an emergency and we need him that week. You can check him out, as you should, on social media, at Andrew Brandt. The Business of Sports podcast is fantastic. We'll get to that momentarily. And then, of course, you want to get his Sunday newsletter. It's really nice to get that into your inbox on Sunday mornings. Encourage you to do that as well. If you're following him on social media, he will post a link to that. Makes it pretty easy just to click on it and sign up. Andrew, uh, there's a lot to get to. I guess I want to start, before I forget, with the not one but two Business of Sports podcasts that you did last week that got quite a bit of attention and were very timely with everything going on at the league meetings last week. Yeah, thanks, Ross. Uh, You know, the league meetings featured Roger Goodell answering questions about the investigation or lack thereof of the Washington football team over all those years. What people kind of didn't realize or maybe even just kind of flushed away, you and I talked about it briefly. This summer, the report was ended. The investigation ended with a $10 million fine to the Washington team transfer of ownership operations to Mrs. Daniel Snyder. And that was it. But what we now learn is it was an oral report. There's no written findings. And these women that were interviewed for 40 plus hours uh, by the investigators, their stories were not heard. And that rubbed me the wrong way, as a lot of people, Ross. So I gave them a voice. First, the attorney representing those women, Lisa Banks, who again thought they were having a serious conversation with the attorney and her team only to see an oral report and no record of the findings. And then Ross, three or four of the women affected by working there reached out to me and two could make the appointed time for our podcast. And they spoke about the experiences there. And again, I encourage people to listen to two podcasts last week things like being told to wear high heels and not flats, constantly being remarked upon how how they looked, told to wear tight dresses, all those things gave them a voice. And I just thought they needed that because, you know, Washington football team is not going to be open about that. And I think that's important. So, yes, thanks for bringing it up, those two podcasts last week before I did the rants this week. So I guess I'm curious, Andrew, just to kind of wrap that up, What was your takeaway, biggest takeaway, from those two interviews, those two podcasts last week? That attorney Beth Wilkinson, respected Washington attorney, did take it seriously, sat with these women, or her team, a lot of lawyers, sat with these women for hours and hours, asked serious questions, sat with the attorney. But at the moment of truth, the league wanted an oral report and no written record of the findings. And this this is sticks with me, Ross, and I hope it'll stick with our listeners. We've had voluminous reports about deflated footballs. It was called the Wells Report about the Ray Rice investigation. It was called the Mueller Report. 
We've had a report about Richie Incognito and Jonathan Martin. That was 110 pages, but no report here. Why? Why? The obvious answer is, if you're wondering what the answer is, this affects an owner, not a player. And I know a lot of players are wondering, you know, that's unfair. So that sticks with me. Wow. Um, I, I guess the other question while we're on it was just sort of your reaction to the league meeting last week where Roger Goodell said that he was satisfied with the punishment of Daniel Snyder and the other owners either commented on it or said they didn't need to see a written report really other than Raiders owner Mark Davis. He was the only one that said, yeah, there should be a written report. Yeah, he's the maverick like his dad. He's always sort of saying things the other owners don't want to hear. Uh, yeah, I think that's the end of it for now. And I've talked about this before. You have too. The uh, We, media fans, etc., will move on to the next drama. We've got plenty of drama this week. But as I noted, Congress has entered the chat. So the House Oversight Committee, um, they're interested in seeing more about this lack of written investigation. So while the NFL could ignore fans and media and lawyers, they probably can't ignore Congress. So this may not be the end of it. I just, I guess I'm curious about that. How does that happen? And, and, and like the house oversight committee, how does it happen that they have an interest in what's their power? Like, what do they do? I, I don't know not a lot about that. Yeah, and I'm probably not an expert in it either, Ross. I just think that they're looking at it in their statement that this NFL has such an impact on people and young lives, and they're going to look into this. And the brazen nature of the Gruden email has also attracted their attention that this has been going on a while and it's never been kind of snuffed out. Uh, what can they do? That's a good question. They can bring it into the light. That's, I guess, what they can do. And whether there's subpoenas and sanctions... We'll find out. So another piece of major news to discuss involves the Raiders this morning, and uh, it's horrible. Henry Ruggs the third, he is last year's first round pick. I believe he's number twelve overall, a four year fully guaranteed contract. We found out yesterday that he was involved very early Tuesday morning in a car crash that resulted in a, in a death. And he's been charged with, I think, two felonies, uh, uh, DUI resulting in death, which is obviously absolutely horrible. And I got to tell you, I was surprised. I did a game last night, Andrew, and I hop in the car and I'm driving home and I see that the Raiders released Henry Ruggs so I guess I'll start with that. I, um, you know, I don't want to come across in any way as downplaying the gravity of the situation. I can assure you, I realize how horrible it is that a young person lost their life and how serious it is. But I guess I'm still surprised that the Raiders moved that swiftly to just outright release him in this situation. What was your reaction? I think I have some of that too. Um, this is so sensitive because we do have a lost life here. I don't know where to start. I mean, at the Packers, we did give guys a keychain that said, if you're impaired, call this number, we'll pick you up. Or we had a service or even our own security people would pick them up. You know, it was mixed results with that Ross because do we want, you know, management knowing that a guy's drunk out there and he had to be picked up and they didn't trust that that wouldn't get to our management? But of course, there's Ubers and everything else. And this was, you know, there's no defense for what Henry Ruggs did. Now, the Raiders, could they have kept him on, gone through the commissioner exempt, having him sort of off the team, but paid? Yeah. And shown a little bit of compassion. But as you noted, they didn't. I think from a management point of view, they probably said, we just don't want to deal with this. We want to let him get on with his life and deal with the legalities elsewhere. I can see both sides. Um, 
And you know my statement, greater talent equals greater tolerance. Like you said, 12th pick in the draft, one of the fastest players in the league. It's certainly a talented guy. But this goes beyond greater talent, greater tolerance with rugs. Obviously, our heart goes out to the victim, but um, it sounds weird, but we hope for Ruggs best, too. I mean, we, you know, he's, his career's probably over, uh, at least for a long time, and he's got to face this. And, yeah, I'm not sure what else to say. Uh, you know, I put out a tweet, what are the odds a month ago there'd be no John Gruden and Henry Ruggs on the Raiders? And I... I don't mean to make light of anything, but like you, it's such a sensitive topic. Yeah, I mean, he's 22 years old. Uh, he clearly made a horrible, horrible mistake. And that's what's so scary about these situations. I mean, it's going to affect the rest of his life. Obviously, it's affecting the victim's life, the victim's family life, Henry Rugg's family life. It's just... Uh, so scary to see how so many things can change in such an in, in just an instant with one poor choice. But I guess um, you know, as we both said, it's a very sensitive topic. But uh, it's hard to not think that you know that the Raiders just wanted to move on because of the mistake that he made, and yet it's hard. On some level, I guess, Andrew, given that it was the same day as the trade deadline, to not juxtapose it I, at least a little bit with the Deshaun Watson situation. I'm not equating what Watson's been accused of with what happened with Ruggs, but certainly a stark contrast in how those organizations have handled those situations because the Texans could have chosen to just release Deshaun Watson or move on from him because of the accusations against him because Henry Ruggs is still also innocent until proven guilty. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a, it's an awkward transition, but I said for weeks and months, they're not trading Deshaun Watson. I said it earlier before all the charges came out because he was a great player and they just re-signed him. And I say it, for the past four months because of what's come out about his charges, 22 civil, 10 criminal complaints against him. Not so much the Texans not wanting to trade him, but the other teams, like who's going to trade for that and bring him into their community and tell their fan base, largely women, or at least hopefully a lot of women, look what we got. Um, I think the most underreported story of the year in the NFL, Ross, is the fact that there's no clarity in, in Houston. They have this young star quarterback on their team, who, and they're an epically bad offense, right? And they're not playing him. And we all sort of wink, wink, yeah, you know, he's got issues, they're going to pay him, go. Like, no one has said this. Not the Texans, not the NFL, not Watson's representatives it just kind of assumed that we all are just not looking right he's going to be there he's told to shut up stay away and you'll get paid it's just odd it's just odd it, it's i've said there's no way in god's green earth he's going to play this year and we know that now but it's just odd we have no clarification from the league or the team about this double secret commissioner exemplus that seems to be happening yeah it certainly seems like they have some type of um arrangement yeah worked out trade deadline uh as is often the case andrew not very eventful other than a pretty big trade involving von miller your thoughts on the trade deadline in general and von miller in particular yeah ross did a deep dive on the podcast this week but i'm it's, it's an interesting trade. Let's look at it from two sides. From the Rams side, they acquire this another magnificent piece for their um, defense, along with Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey. Oh, boy, they're going to be so great. They're, they're all in, right? They are all in. They gave up a second and third. They have no draft picks next year except for a fifth and a seventh. They're going to, as I said, they're going to swoon at pictures of Matthew Stafford and Von Miller during the April weekend next year. Um, I, you know me, I'm more conservative. 
I'm like, okay, they have no draft. Draft means infrastructure. Draft means depth. In 2023, 24, who's backing up their stars? It's not going to be draft picks. So, you know, I'm like, okay, all in's great, but what if you're what if you're all out in four years, three years? You know, someone's got to clean up that mess. The other thing about the Rams is, I hope it works because Miller's a free agent and uh, they got to have a plan. The part about the Broncos, they get rid of the most recognizable player on their team. They get a second and third, but they're paying nine million of his nine seven. It's a money ball trade, which I like. So they're paying nine million for a second and a third. Good value considering four years ago, the Browns paid 16 million for Osweiler and got a second. So they pay nine million, get a second and third. Uh, I say good job by the Broncos. Interesting. Because they're getting the value of, they're getting better value for the money. I guess the flip side is, it's an interesting message to send the locker room at four and four. Uh, yeah. But I, I suppose, Andrew, you know, knowing who you are, self-evaluating is as important as anything. And they know that they're not good enough. Yeah, I mean, there were some names on the market, supposedly, maybe Fletcher Cox in Philadelphia that, you know, you've got to deal with the locker room if that happens, like in Denver. But you know this better than I do. Players are resilient, you know. If a guy's gone, they're like, yeah, maybe a day or two, like empathy. And then it's like the next game, <laughs> the next practice, like, and an opportunity for someone else. You know that, like this idea that, pl that players are going to mourn and come on. Why do you think there wasn't more activity at the trade deadline? I mean, there's usually not a lot, but it feels like this year was especially pronounced because of the salary cap issues. Yeah, I say it every year. I think it's less cap, but more, you know this, again, football schematic. It's not like basketball, baseball, guys move in seamlessly. And, and even though they moved the trade deadline back a few years ago, I don't think it's, now we got 17 games and we don't know if teams are buyers or sellers or contenders. And again, that giving up thing, it's not as pronounced. Um, and teams are saying, like Deshaun Jackson, are saying, we'll just wait to cut him, <laughs> right? Like, we're not going to give you a seventh for Deshaun Jackson. Like, Houston got a seventh in 2024 for Mark Ingram. I mean, yeah. I mean, sometimes teams just wait, you know, they'll cut him. Uh, I guess the last thing, Andrew, that I wanted to ask you about, Odell Beckham Jr., you know, yesterday his dad's posting video of him open and Baker Mayfield not throwing him the ball. LeBron James tweets free OBJ, but he's still there. He's you still know, there. The, the trade deadline came and went. He's still there. Clearly, you know, it's not a coincidence that his dad and LeBron did this the day of the trade deadline. What do you do now if you're the Browns? <laughs> like we just talked about, you know, you got to move on. He's got to move on. And this is all communication, you know, from my vantage point, as I always say, it was always the agent. So I'd be talking to Odell's agent today for management. And then somebody's got to be talking to the player, whether it's coach or player per development guy, you know, got to move past this. And the Browns are kind of teetering. As we know, they've lost a few games that maybe they should have won. And Odell's got to buy in. Odell's got to buy in and they got to bring him in and he's got his best buddy Landry there. So good luck to the Browns. I know they got a huge fan base, but they've got to turn it around with Beckham. Check him out on social media for sure at Andrew Brandt. That way you'll see every time the business of sports podcast is posted. Can't highly recommend it enough. Did a major deep dive this week on so many of the things we just touched on briefly and then last week's episodes extremely powerful extremely important and frankly Andrew seems like you're the only person in the media really willing to go there really willing to give these women a voice I don't want to say that other members of of NFL media so to speak are afraid but 
they're certainly not as willing to take it as far as you have. Yeah, there's some things I see and I want to give people a voice. You know, there are other areas I don't dive into that others do. I don't look at it as I'm some, because I'm not an investigative reporter. I'm not a reporter, as you know. I don't use sources, but I use my insight and my experience to sort of bring out things. And like everything, right, I'll move on to the next thing. Um, but I just, for that week, I wanted to give the voice to the Washington football team employees. Andrew, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. All right, Ross, always a pleasure. You know what's a pleasure for me? That I still have some hair, even though like 10 years ago, heck, 10 years ago, my wedding day in 2006, when I look back on the videos and pictures, I can start to see that I was losing my hair a little bit. Thank goodness for keeps. Look, there's two FDA approved medications that can prevent hair loss. There's only two. Keeps offers both. And I've told you guys this before, and I've said it on other shows. I was actually taking both of these after talking to multiple doctors about it before Keeps even existed. I mean, I, I was taking these medications. Uh, one is a topical that you rub on the top of your head, your bald spot. The other one's a pill. It's so nice now not have to go to the doctor's office, get the prescription, then go pick it up at the pharmacy, or even have to go to the store to get the topical solution. I just get them both sent to me. Discreet packaging. I don't even know why it needs to be discreet packaging. I'm not like ashamed of it at all. And proven results. If I could give 26-year-old Ross Tucker any advice, it would have been to start these medicines a lot earlier than I did. And that's the exact same advice I would give all you guys. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash Ross to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Ross to get your first month free. Keeps.com slash Ross. Tux Takes. Hey, Ross. Good morning. Uh, I know you and Andrew obviously talked about Henry Ruggs. Anything else that you want to cover on this topic? Well, I touched on it earlier. I, I guess I would just say, you know, when you're 42 and your your children are eight and nine, you just look at it differently, I think. You know, Henry Ruggs is a lot closer in age to my kids than he is to me. And I could be Henry Ruggs' dad. And I guess that's who I think about. You know, I think about the family members of the victim. I think about the family members for Henry Ruggs and just how horrible that phone call must have been. And... You know, obviously, it it's, I think, a wake-up call for anybody. Anybody that ever has a few and then drives, you know, it's not that we should need it. And I think the messaging in our society has gotten better and better over the years and people realize it. But it just seems like, you know, these these accidents still happen and they're just so, so preventable. It's, it's heartbreaking. Tux takes. As discussed, it was a relatively quiet trade deadline, but the chiefs got edge rusher Melvin Ingram for the Pittsburgh Steelers for sixth round pick. Niners acquired D lineman Charles Amenehu. The Eagles traded for a sixth rounder from uh, oh for uh, cornerback uh, Kerry Vincent, and the Jets traded tight end Daniel Brown for guard Laurent Duvernay Tardif from the Chiefs. Right. So um, you know Melvin Ingram wanted out, and the Chiefs wanted more of an edge rush. They're obviously trying to get a spark for this year. So that makes sense. Amenahu's got some versatility on the D line that the Niners felt like they needed. The Eagles have added like three or four young corners since the end of training camp. I mean, they are really looking for young corners that they can develop 
you know, with Steven Nelson and Darius Slay not being young players at this stage of their careers. And then Laurent Duvernay Tardif, uh, just obviously we've we've had him on the show before. An absolutely awesome, awesome story is Laurent. And he wasn't playing in Kansas City. He approved the trade to the Jets. Gives him a chance to play, I think. Tuck's takes. As you and Andrew uh, discussed as well, Odell Beckham Jr. clearly wants out of Cleveland, but he was not traded. Right. I don't know how they're going to handle this. Not a big fan of Odell Beckham Jr. and the way he handled this, and he's handled his career. I tweeted this yesterday, at Ross Tucker NFL. Just feels like the last couple of years in Cleveland have been similar to the last couple of years with the Giants. He's injured often. He's not very productive. He's not happy. He wants out. You know, if everywhere you go it stinks, it, it might be you, is an expression I've heard. And the thing I don't like about it the most, I almost understand when guys are trying to get more money, but this guy just is looking for more catches. He's not looking for more money. And I also think it's sort of cowardly to have your dad post that video and then have LeBron tweet. Like, come out like a man and say that you want to trade or request a trade. Just seems a little cowardly to me the way he went about it. Tux takes. Some other news include the Rams releasing Deshaun Jackson, Packers moving on from Jalen Smith after two games, Ravens linebacker Malik Harrison being hit in the leg by a stray bullet, and Titans signing running backs uh, Deontay Foreman and Adrian Peterson while releasing linebacker Avery Williamson. So evidently the Rams weren't able to, to trade Deshaun Jackson. I don't know where he's going to go, where he's got a better opportunity. I'll be curious to see where that goes. I mean, I'm sure he can go somewhere where he has a chance to get the ball more, but he had a chance to win a Super Bowl with the Rams. I mean, that's another guy right there that he's from Los Angeles. He's on maybe the, they're the number one team in my power rankings, but it's more important to him to play and – I guess I understand that, right? He wants to continue his career. If he doesn't get any playing time or have any catches this year, it'll be hard to continue his career. But, wow, I wonder if he ends up regretting that, especially because if there's an injury, he would be right there. Jalen Smith, you know, I think this goes to some of the excitement people had about him being signed. Clearly, he's not a guy the teams really want anymore. Malik Harrison... Can you imagine being at a reportedly family gathering and you get hit in the leg by a stray bullet? I think sometimes a lot of us don't really understand where some of these guys are from and where they grew up. Uh, and then, yes, the, the the Titans got a couple of big running backs now, Peterson and Foreman, to try to replace Derrick Henry, which the biggest running back shoes – in the NFL to try to fill. Listen, <clears throat> don't try to drive this winter or even late fall without making sure your car is ready to go. That's why we've got these exclusive deals until November 7th with AutoZone Visibility Week. If your wipers are squeaking or streaking, that's a tongue twister, by, tongue twister, by the way. Gosh, I got tongue twister I was trying to say tongue twister, and I said that. I got tongue twisted saying tongue twister. Squeaking, streaking, whatever. Get some rain -X quantum wiper blades. Join the AutoZone Rewards Program. Get the Sylvania LED Fog Twin Pack. Just make sure your car is ready to go, okay? Like, don't be the person that – don't get ahead of the game. The separations in the preparation, don't procrastinate and wait till it's too long, too late. Ready to see more and drive safer? Visit your nearest AutoZone or head to AutoZone.com to start your job today. Get in the zone. AutoZone. Shoutouts are in order. They always are. By the way, we'll have Fantasy Feast podcast later today. And even if you're not really that into fantasy football, Joe has so much good information and stats for you know these players that I highly recommend you check it out. Shoutouts, Pizza Boy Brewing, Sportaculture, Vision Comics with an X, humanheadnyc.com, and Steakhouse Sports 
rostucker.com. I think we're done here. Thanks for listening to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Fantasy Feasts, Even Money, Business of Sports, and College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found. A lot of times on the show, I mentioned DraftKings. Here's what you need to know. You got to be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 100Gambler or in Indiana, 109WITHIT. By the way, if what I was talking about included a deposit bonus, it doesn't always, sometimes it does. Deposit bonus requires 25 times playthrough, and deposit bonuses are paid out in site credit.